Hello, I'm Nils from Network Tomorrow and today I'm going to show you on how to change the CPU on the 4U system for the NAS. So we're going to switch CPU today, so that's the process. First of all, what we're going to do is going to switch off the system, make sure it's completely off, by holding the power button in the front. You can hear, you can hear the system power down, and now you go to the back, and also make sure that your power supplies, either your one or second power supply slides out, and the power is completely off, so there is no system power to the system whatsoever. Next thing, we're going to go forwards. So what we're trying to do, achieve next is open the case, and we're going to remove two by removing the lid from two screws. So there's one on the right side and one on the left side. So we should go ahead, always make sure you use a hand screwdriver, not a drill. You're going to use a drill, you're going to over tighten them, or you're going to lose the edges. So there, there must be two screws. Put them aside so you can know, you know which one is one. So now we're going to open the case where we're pushing, pushing down and sliding backwards. Now we're going to lift up from the back, and here we have the lid. That's the first step done. Now, what we see here is we have two fans in the back, a shroud, cables, a rate controller, and two CPUs underneath. To uh, get to the CPUs, first of all, we're going to go forward, and there are two fans over here, and there's a notch. Hold the notch, press it against the fan, and lift it up from the front. This is how it will slide out. Same process, so we'll over again on the second fan as well. Now, just by wiggling this backwards and forwards, eventually the shroud will just slide off. For the other side, you there. Now, next step we're going to do is, we can do this uh, to make it even e easier for us and less damaging if there is something to go wrong, we can also remove the dims. But keep in mind if you have set pair of dims in the set number of space, you want to you make want to make sure you label them on a paper for at least, and just put them aside. For this reason, we're not going to do that right now because we think we can manage it right now. So there is CPU two and CPU one. Now, how to remove those heat sinks? First of all, we're going to go diagonally, all over the across pattern. Make sure you don't exert too much stress on the screws, otherwise there will the screws will not, next time if you screw them in, they will not work properly. The edges will be gone and it's, it's going to be harder for you to screw the new heat sinks or even damage the socket uh, screws inside. So we're going to go forwards and we're going to loosen the first screw. Here a click, then you know this, is, this screw is loose. Now in a cross pattern. Always make sure you can see the heatsink in your hand and always make sure you're going to watch the screw and the screwdriver. There should be a second click. Second click. Now that's the second screw loose. Now let's go on forwards and the first screw and the fourth screw. And you should probably see it's already coming around. If you have this kind of situation where you have heat sink coming off from this side or, or either that side, but doesn't lift off completely, then you must have one screw still intact somewhere. And make sure you can find which one is the one that's actually not loosened up. Okay, so here we have a heat sink. Now, we have thermal compound on the heat sink and on the CPU. Now what we can do right here is we can leave the uh, thermal compound on the heatsink, but we're going to go ahead and we're going to use either a little bit of cloth or isopropyl alcohol to clean the CPU up. For simple matter we're going to go with a little bit of cloth and we're in the socket, be careful, you can scrape off the old reservoir. So we can do it just like that. Make sure it doesn't go into the socket and not anywhere near the other components like the VRAM and the MOSFETs and everything else, and the face controllers. Make sure that it is clean. 
And now we're coming to the second part. We're going to do the same steps all over again with the second CPU. This, in this case, it's CPU 1. We took apart CPU 2 at the first place. So we're going to take it apart from here. You can also stand close closer to the system so you know what you you can see what you're doing better ra rather than standing in front of the system. But it, it, it all depends on how you have access to the server. So in a cross pattern, we're done with the first process. And this time we did it perfectly. We have it coming off quite easy. Now, same step again. Next time, you're going to switch over a cleaner side or take another piece of cloth and go in a circle of pattern and get towards inside. Make sure you don't have any reservoir of the thermal compound going into the socket or anywhere near out parts of it. So we're going to throw that away. Uh, now, first of all, we're going to go. There are two types of locks and these are all in mirror position. Mm -hmm. Now, we're going to go ahead and we see that the sockets are rotated. Now, first first of all, we're going to go ahead and we're going to see these two notches. These two. So, as you can probably see, we cannot open this one because it's locked on that side. What we're going to go ahead is push this down, slide it towards the RAM slot, lift it up carefully, now go to the second side and do the same process. Put it down towards the RAM and lift it up carefully. Now you can go ahead and take the, the second one, that was the second step. Take that, put it backwards. Now push it down a little bit, the first one, so this lid will open up. Slide it towards the back and let it be like that. Now. This is the hard part. Now we will have to take the CPU out without damaging the socket. And we don't want that to happen. Now we're gonna take the CPU out by going onto the side. And you can feel a little bit move. A little just a little wiggle, just don't overturn the pressure. And now just lift it up. Like that. So it should end up with this kind of product. A core processing unit. Make sure you don't have anything, any dust or anything falling into the socket while it's open because we're gonna do the same process all over again. We're gonna have to close the lid afterwards and then put the CPU back in and the new heat sinks back on. We don't want to use the old heat sinks because of the fact that the old thermal compound has a worn off. So we now you know how to open the socket, how to take it out. Now the same process goes all, all over again. We're going to do the second CPU as well, so you can see the difference why you have to keep in mind which way to put it. Now take the second, second CPU out as well. You may hold it, you want to hold it this way and always on the edges, not on the golden pins in the bottom. And now it comes to the hard part. On this particular motherboard, there is, you can probably see, there are these notches over here. Let me put on the light, you can see better. Okay, so we don't have any much one. Okay, so here's the situation. There is, there should be a golden triangle on this, or a black triangle on the socket and there's a golden triangle on the CPU before we put in the CPU well, we want to make sure the rotation of the golden triangle and this golden triangle line up so we now have the exact knowledge on, with, on which way to put the CPU in now lift it up and put the CPU inside gently you can wiggle it into place just a little bit of wiggle and now we're going to close the lid, push it down, now there's a second notch, push it down, a little bit to the dim, the dim side, now slide it underneath, like that. Now, 
second pin also downwards towards the dim a little bit and now slide it underneath the notch. So that's that CPU done. Now in this case, it's the other way around. Before we had 90 degrees, now 180. So now we know that also in this socket there's a black triangle here and a golden triangle there. So we know we're in the exact spot that we want to be. Now, the same situation. The second pin that you opened in the first place, that goes here underneath this pin. So that's, that side is now locked, the front side of the CPU. Now the first pin that you, the primary pin that you first used to open the CPU socket, now put that, that also in, slide it down underneath to the notch, and these T two CPUs are now completely locked. So next thing, next step we're gonna do, we incorporate also some heat sinks. These, 48 PS. This, this is the exact model that we're going to use. It goes with these, with to the system and to the case. Now, we can take one at a time. There is foam around the heatsink. Now, put it down. Open up the second one as well. Put this foam away. So then out of the way, and now turn them over, and now you can see a plastic cover. Remove the plastic cover, put them on the old heat sinks. Both of them are now gone. Now, what doesn't matter is which way the heat sink goes, either this way or that way. It doesn't matter. Now we're gonna go first and we're gonna install the rear CPU heat sink. We're gonna leave it like that, and we're, we're gonna put the second new one aside. Now, what we're trying to do over here, there's one screw here, and this here. So we're gonna go still cross pattern. This time, we're gonna be extra careful. So we're gonna take the first one, and always use a hand screwdriver or a Phillips screwdriver, and a little bit of pressure onto the heatsink, which are thumb or, or a couple of fingers and screw it in slightly. You can feel it already having a little bit of torque, but don't torque it down all the way. Now we're going to go forwards and we're going to take this one, the rear one. Now we're going to have to put a little bit of pressure onto this part of the heatsink on the lower case. Now we're going to go, go, and we can probably feel it already grabbing. Okay, that's good. We're going to leave it. Head to the third one in cross pattern yet again. We're gonna go there, and we're gonna go halfway until we can feel it already grabbing. Okay, so now to the fourth one and the final one. We're gonna exert some some pressure onto the front of the heatsink, and we're gonna screw it down. This way, now the fourth one, we're gonna go screw down all the way. Now we're gonna go step backwards, and we're gonna do it on this side. And you can feel it already torquing. Okay, that's good. We're gonna take the last second one that we actually screwed in the first place. We're gonna go with full. And now the first one that we actually did in the first place. Now every screw now should be tight. There should be no extra rotations on the screwdriver so we know that this CPU heatsink is now secured and the thermal compound has been transferred onto the core processing unit. Now we're going to go forwards and do the same process on the second CPU. A little bit of pressure so we know that the holes are aligned. Now yet again same process. Take your time there's no rush. Okay. Yes, I can come back. Okay. Now
Okay, so both of the heat sinks are now in place. And we want to make sure that there isn't any cable or anything loose that w while we did this process. Make sure that all the power cables on the CPU and the motherboard are okay. And now we're going to go forwards and put on the shroud again. Want to make sure that all the fan cables in the bottom are freely moving. And there are notches in the front and in the back. Now we should hold this shroud in place, e are these fans and these leads. So we're going to go and slide this fan in, continue here and click. Click number one. And click number two. So this is the system route right now done. The CPU interchange is done. Now we're going to go and put the lid back on. And after that we're going to see either if the system, system post and the BIOS sees two CPUs as 2622s and after we're done that then we can slide it back into the rack and we're ready to go now the second the first screw on the right side there might be some on the rear side depending on the case and now the second seat the second screw on the left side now, what we're gonna do here is we can either put two um, power cores in or we can go with one. Either if we go with one, we're going to slide the second CPU or power supply unit out. Take the cable, insert it to the second here. You can already hear it powering up, go to the front, and power up the system. The keyboard and monitor should be turned on. Now I'm going to turn on the system. We can already see Supermicro booting up. And we can press escape and tab to probably escape this if you have any other BIOS. We're going to press delete at the same time. And we want to get to the BIOS. 